with the yeah. LMDH side of things for people that don't know, as in the who's talking, can you obviously you know a bit about it? Can you explain to us how that's going to change from the current LMP2, which is a prototype, and you know what kind of teams will be you know up for doing it? Um, so at the moment, you got um, so LMP2 at the moment is well, so from last year, LMP2 was you know a fairly quick car, like the cars were not slow and they've slowed them down a bit now for the hypercar. So the hypercar is, is now in play for this year and next year, which Peugeot have now come into. Um, Toyota are always there. Glickenhouse is a manufacturer. They've, they've entered in for this year. Yeah. Um, sorry, Peugeot will be next year, but they've, they've put in a hypercar. And then when that, so that's going to be on for two or three years or they're, they're, you know, they're in, that they want it to go in for two or three years. And then, then it will go at MDH where you have DPI manufacturers come in. So they're trying to make a top class, almost like GT1. I, yeah. I wasn't around then, but GT1, where you can have cars from America, cars from Europe, cars from wherever, join into Le Mans, you know, the big race and everyone goes for the win. You have seven or eight manufacturers all going for it in top class. And LMDH is the category that they've come up with that they can incorporate cars from america so you have um acura you have cadillac you have who else is there you have mazda there's other manufacturers you know i don't know what bmw are doing i don't know you might know nick but you know not yet no don't know yet drop it, nick. <laughs> but that's but that's but that that could happen ferrari could come in because with dpi in america the cars almost look like they're road cars mm -hmm. So it's, it makes it kind of all right for them to say, yeah, we'll do that. But yeah, it's much more viable. Kind of, yeah, it it relevant, yeah, prototype is signed LMP2. It's not, it doesn't look like a car, does it? It's like a, it's a prototype. So I think they're trying to bring manufacturers in, but I, I have no clue who's coming in, who's coming out. I think Audi might be in. Yeah. yeah I, think, back. I think it's just kind of, it's quite exciting at the moment, isn't it? Because a lot of talk about, you know, all these manufacturers that are interested in interested in it, um, even before they've entered in it yet. But I think for like guys like you and, and myself, even speaking, Nick, probably as well. And we've, a few of the guys that we've had on already have spoke about it as well, that it's kind of just be good to, to get a, a bum in a seat, so to speak, um, stay relevant, stay around, you know, stay, you know, at the top performing, winning races, getting podiums and results. And then, you know, two or three years down the line, like you say, when it's sort of maybe mainstream, yeah, um, you have a chance to jump into into something, you know, a bit a bit more serious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it it's LMP two this year. This is why another thing is getting a bit difficult for me personally because there's a lot of interest now into LMP two um, purely because of the speed of the car and it's very close to what LMDH is going to become. And um, they've actually had to slow down the current LMP2 cars. So everyone wants to, because because there's only so much hypercar at the moment, because it's only going to be on for two or three years. There's not as much manufacturers involved now. But everyone knows there's going to be more with LMDH. So everyone's trying to get in a prototype to show how good they are mm. and, and be in the car that's a similar speed and you know cockpit and all this stuff. Um, or if they're from a single seater background and they can go in from that area. But you, you see a lot of GT drivers now trying to get into the prototypes, you know, and um, I think you have like guys in Asia, you had um, Nicky Tim, you had uh, Van der Linde, you had, yeah. you had drivers going in. Um, and then you also had drivers from F2, F3 coming in, you know, so it's, it's, it's now the, the place that people want to go to and to try and get involved with a manufacturer in MDH and go for the win at Le Mans and do like a Nick Tandy, let's say, and win it outright, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure drivers cool. out there well good enough to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Who can get yeah. the seat, isn't it? Yeah, it's about how everything falls into place. And because they're all coming in, obviously, mm. as one big package, for, for from my point of view at least, the sales and the marketing that you can get from LMDH added mm. as a bolster to your GT program already. So example, say Ferrari came in, they've already got their GT3 or GT3 Pro, depending on if GTLM stays around. Yeah. Uh, and again, for the listeners that don't know, GTLM or GTE is the top class of GT racing in WEC or IMSA at the moment. In IMSA, they have actually dropped that for next year. So GT3 Pro will come around. So basic GT3 cars 
or basic inverted commas GT3 cars will now be running as the top class, which I think from my point of view, race, racing in them for, for BMW is fantastic. And I think it will open up the market and make massive competition, but it has to be a sensible thing for all manufacturers to look at because you can win LMDH and therefore Le Mans outright. Sebring, Daytona, all these huge races outright as a manufacturer for a cost that is relatively sensible, I presume, compared to the LMP1 days of uh, you know of the past where they had the huge hundreds of million pound budgets. So I think that's why it's so popular at the moment that they can they all have to be considering it, otherwise they're stupid. Yeah, exactly. And um, you've also got you know series on the side of that like Formula E, and you've got you know. There's going to be new um, technology as well, so it's all it's all it's all changing. going electric as well in the future. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think you know from the outside we're seeing a real transitional period, aren't we? Like sure. in a couple in a couple of years, I think the the um, the landscape of four wheel racing is going to look very different. So I I think it's really exciting. I think it's mm. really exciting. Yeah. Well. I mean, you have, to, you have to ignore my basic estimations here, but I mean, if you were to run an LMP1 in a GTE car in the past, which no one really does, but you're talking many hundreds of millions, aren't you? Yeah, um, big time. To run big those time. in the past. And, you know, the GT3 regs now to do the same championship that a GTE car would do in WEC, for example, or IMSA, it's going to be less than half, maybe a third, um, to be able to, you know, to run the same championship with a different car. And then those teams, you know, like your... I don't know your Corvettes, Porsche, Aston. You know that have saved the money by by you know not doing GTE. They all of a sudden free up their budget a bit more. Yeah. Um. And who knows what they want to do with that? But you might, like I think Nick kind of alluded to, you might see teams wanting to do both. Mm. Yeah. Especially if it's a you know, no one knows how long LMDH will be there for. So you sometimes see manufacturers like Porsche just come in and just do two or three years flat out, spend the money. Mm try and win them one outright or whatever they want to do or Daytona, whatever they want to do. And then they kind of leave. So it's, um, you know, you just never know who's going to come in. No idea. Mm. You always have the, you know, the long last in manufacturers like uh, Toyota have been there since. The yeah, start, the uh... yeah. And Porsche and Audi have come in now and now everyone went to Formula E. So it all, I mean, I'd like to be on fly on the wall, you know, the head guys to know what they're talking about, what they're really saying, but no one knows, do they? What what the conversations are going on? You just hear, you just hear stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I'm sure everyone's the same as well. I'm very, I think over, like you say, over the next three four months, people are going to have to be making decisions in terms of what they're going to do, because mm -hmm. you want a testing year with these new regs and, and making sure everything fits correctly, because you're going to be bolting in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to probably an Orica by the by the looks of it at the moment, um, with your hybrid engine and then your um, body styling of say um, a BMW, a Ferrari, a Porsche, or, or or whatever. So you need that time to, you know, develop everything. So commitment can't be that long. And then the people, I would say, looking from the outside that are doing the testing will most likely be inside of the um, yeah, in the program when it starts. So getting your ass in the correct seat. Yeah. whether it be LMP2 or, or whatever is that's why it's so massive at the moment and that's why people are you know maybe struggling to get the drives that they deserve because the demand and people wanting to pay for it is actually quite big yeah, yeah.